Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a quick little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Artisan Cutlery Accelerator, <coughs> except we have titanium scales and a CPM S90V blade, which is really cool. This is um, a knife that I've reviewed before and it's more, uh, it's not really a budget knife, but it's more budget form. Um, so we've already kind of gone over the design and for that reason, I'm gonna skip a lot of that um, and just talk about uh, the main element here, which is value, because this is a super nice knife for $199. That's extremely competitive. Every now and then I see a company bring in one of these titanium and S90V knives to the table for uh, 200 or slightly less. And this is the case here. Um, that is amazing. And this is incredibly well-made knife. Uh, it's a larger knife, right? It's not going to be for everybody, but wow, the value is definitely there. This is also a Mike Snowdy design. Uh, a lot of you are going to be familiar with uh, Mike Snowdy uh, and the, uh, the custom knives that he makes, of course. Um, that's an element that I missed in the initial review, so that was my bad. Um, but yeah, if you didn't know, Mike Snowdy Design. Thanks so much to Artisan Cutlery for providing this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know why I'm coughing so much this morning. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement. We'll do some specs for people who are not familiar with this knife. It's a big one. It's it's almost nine inches. It's about 8.9 inches by my measurement. Uh, blade length is about 3.85. Cutting edge is 3.75 inches. Just a couple of size comparisons today up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. As you can see here, it's definitely a bigger knife. How about some other larger knives? The CGRB uh, Large Pyrite. Uh, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hog, And then I think we'll also do the Spyderco PM2. All righty. How's the action on this knife? Very good. I think this actually works better as a frame lock than I, th I believe the original was a liner, or not the original, but the first version that I looked at was a liner lock. Uh, the access to the lock bar is very good. Nice cut out there. Very smooth action. Very small, uh, <laughs> small shut. False shut. Um, I think a lot of that is just because of how big the blade is. Um, one of the things that I love about this knife is the positioning and shape of the opening hole. It's very easy to get the meat of your thumb in there and then flick it out, which is not always something that's easy to do with these sort of thumb hole openers. They're usually prioritizing the ease of the reverse flick, which is not something that everybody knows how to do or cares to do. So the ability to comfortably wheel this thing out or thumb flick it out is really much appreciated, uh, really much, very much appreciated. Um, but yeah, the detent is tuned properly. I said this in the unboxing, Artisan Cutlery has come such a long way from their original mushy detents. I mean, look at this, that's really nice. Uh, just a, a really great detent, a really great um, experience here. We have bearings, I'm sure that's obvious, but if you're wondering, definitely bearings. <clears throat> Carry profile, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It is slightly thicker. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This is where you're going to notice in the pocket. It's big. If you are used to carrying uh, some sort of cold steel monstrosity, then you probably will not be bothered by this thing. But if you're used to carrying something like the PM2 or Para 3, it's, this is going to make itself known. It's going to be screaming at you from the pocket. You're definitely going to know that it's in there. <coughs> I think... I got something caught in my throat and just won't leave. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do blade stock thickness because I picked up the scallopers. I don't normally do that at this point, but we're going to go ahead and do it. 140 thousandths on uh, the spine there, so a little bit on the thicker side. That's okay. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We are still looking at a T8 pivot and T6 body screws. I don't know why, Arson Cutlery, please move to T8. Please, I've been asking for years. Please, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, it would um, it would definitely be uh, appreciated. I just realized that the S, the dollar sign on the pocket clip, when I unboxed this, I was like, what's the dollar sign? It's the Snowdy uh, logo, has to be. Um, but anyways, yeah, minimal hardware, easy to take apart. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and um, weigh it. 
probably weighs like six and a half ounces, right? Actually, it comes in under six ounces, which is kind of surprising. I mean, this is an XM24 size knife or very close to it. And it's full titanium. And it's also not milled out on the inside. I <laughs> kind of defying the laws of physics coming in at 5.86 ounces. It's still heavy, but it's not crazy, right? So <coughs> it's kind of neat. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Uh, we talked about this last time. Um, the ergonomic lines are some that kind of lock you into specific zones, which some people really hate and some people love. I generally don't like it. Um, but on this design, it actually feels really good. The two positions that they uh, that are, are meant for you to lock into are extremely comfortable. On this uh, version of the knife, we have a milled titanium pocket clip that follows the curvature of the handle um, and is rounded off everywhere. It's also on the shorter side, which is something that I have to make a point of here. I've been saying for a long time that long pocket clips make no sense. There is never a situation where the pocket clip should be longer than 50% the body of the knife. There is rarely a situation where a pocket clip that is at 50% or approaching 50% is appropriate. It, it almost always causes a little bit of an ergonomic issue, even though it's, it's still functional and acceptable. Um, uh, the shorter the clip, as long as it's not, you don't want it super tiny, but about this size, right? I mean, this is where, what are we at here? 35% the handle length. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's a good sized clip. Uh, I like it and it falls back here more towards the back of my palm or the, the pads up by my, uh, my uh, pinky and this finger here. What do we call this? The third finger or the fourth? I don't know what, which finger it is. I got five fingers. It depends on which direction you start counting from, but it's back there. Um, so that's nice. And that's back here in the standard hammer grip position, right? The primary <laughs> hammer grip position. Choked up, it's even less of a problem. Very comfortable. The frag texturing on this looks really nice and it's also functional. It's not just for looks. They've actually got this machined in a way that it will create for meaningful traction. So not only is this thing nice to look at, has all the snobby, you know, nose in the air, knife enthusiast elements, S90V and titanium, haha, ha, we're better than you, those types of materials, right? Not really. I mean, that's just kind of, kind of how people view this stuff. If you don't regularly buy knives that cost $200, then naturally you view people who do buy knives that cost $200 as people who are nose in the air, knife snobs who don't actually use their stuff, blah, blah, blah. It's all been said before. You keep saying that until you end up doing it yourself. And then all of a sudden, oh, I guess it's not really a snobby thing because I did it, right? And of course, I'm the main character. So whatever I think goes. Yeah, everybody goes down roughly the same path, right? Um, so, you know, <clears throat> your thoughts leading up to a certain point are extremely predictable and it's not because, you know, people are, it's not because people are snobs, it's because we all lived the same experience. We all had the same journey, <laughs> more or less the exact same journey. But it's got all that special stuff that you love if you're already here and you view as, you know, nose in the air snobby stuff if you are not already here. Um, not everybody arrives at the, the point where they're buying $200 knives. I mean, I want to recognize that, right? But the longer you spend in the knife world, the more likely you are to arrive at this point. I have quite a few subscribers who will tell you the same thing. Um, but you're welcome to argue with me in the comments. That's what people usually do anyway. We have a tumbled finish on the blade that looks really good. What a weird tangent. <laughs> He's clearly trying to just smooth that out in the transition. <laughs> Moving on to the blade finish. Uh, we have a nice tumbled finish on the blade that looks really, really good. Um, we have sort of a harpoon. So it's like a dipped harpoon here. Normally we see the spine go straight and then the swedge or the harpoon notch on the swedge comes up. This actually dips down and then comes up into this harpoon notch, which is really nice actually. This is a, a really great position for your thumb and there's plenty of um, sort of, I, I guess, uh, lock in here with your thumb if you need to do some fine detail work. Yes, if you need to shave, you need to reshape your quill or sort of get some, make the, the, this, the frayed edges of your corncob pipe if you need to make them less frayed, uh, whatever. I don't know what people do <laughs> with knives in that position, but if you need to do that, it's very comfortable, right? We have a very strong tip, it's very robust blade geometry, a huge prominent flat uh, that runs out maybe 85% the length of the blade. Um, you know, S90V is not a particularly tough steel, it's far from tough, 
Um, so an at some some added uh, you know robust geometry is is always helpful. You still do end up with a reasonably I'm not going to call this a thin cutting edge. I'm going to call this medium thick, but it will definitely slice. I'll get a piece of paper out just so you guys can see the factory edge. Obviously, slicing paper doesn't prove anything. If you're cutting thicker or more dense material, you're going to have more of a problem here. But you can see that the blade will absolutely slice. Right, the belly is going to allow it. This is like taking like perfectly curved chunks out of this paper. A little bit of edge lifting, but not much. It's absolutely slicey. I mean, slicey enough for EDC tasks. Plenty of belly here. Um, <clears throat> S90V will hold an edge for a very long time. Uh, it also is, uh, I think a lot of companies find it a little bit easier to heat treat. I always assumed that it needed to be higher, but whereas M390's optimal zone is somewhere between 61, 62-ish in there, right? They tend to hit it from 59 to 61, which is suboptimal in my opinion. Uh, S90V's optimal rock wall hardness when we're looking at folding knives, because remember, S90V, its primary application was not originally for folding knives. So believe it or not, it's, it's, a <laughs> optimal hardness for what it's meant to be used for, which I can't remember if it's industrial food prep or something like that. It's actually way lower. It's like 55 to 57. For pocket knives, though, uh, they tend to hit it at 59 to 61, which is extremely optimal for S90V. And at that hardness, it will absolutely outperform M390, even when heat treated to 61 to 62. So S90V, in my opinion, is just flat out better than M390. We're talking about similar toughness. Uh, it has less corrosion resistance, but it's still a stainless steel. I'm not somebody who works. I'm not. I'm not a metallurgist, right? I don't do this type of stuff. This. This is all a product of reading and just light experience using knives and S90V and M390. But uh, yeah, on paper, this thing absolutely outperforms. Like this steel absolutely outperforms M390, and I've come to massively prefer it uh, over M390. Uh, M390 is still a great steel, but that's uh, the reason I'm comparing it is because that's what we usually see. Um, so I think that's great, fantastic. Um, and I think it works with a wide variety of different um, geometries, certainly. Moving on here, um, there's a lanyard thing. It's right back here. We got a little bit of a like a brass colored backspacer. Same with the um, uh, the pivot collar. So that's cool. A little bit of color there. Um, we already talked about the clip. No um, left-handed mounting position. That's too bad. I think lefties would really... Uh, like to enjoy this knife too. We have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, which is nice. We have a huge stop pin, no shouldering on the um, the spine or the tang of the blade, but that's fine. It doesn't need it. No blade play up, down, left to right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Consistent smoothness in here. Very nice detent, and we do have perfect centering, which is also very nice. It's the same as the other one, but just better in a lot of ways. I actually prefer this a lot over the hundred and what is the original version? hundred dollars, hundred and five dollars, something like that. Maybe it's a little less. I prefer this one, and the value on it is off the charts. This is so nice, artisan cutlery. Like I really, they they deserve this credit here. This deserves a mention. The um, overall quality, the overall fit and finish. Everything is so massively improved from the first time that I handled an artisan cutlery knife five years ago. They have done nothing but improve. And they do so many different designs. They don't stick with just one thing. They work with a bunch of different designers. They they you know they do a bunch of different stuff, try to cater to a bunch of different people, and they are always bringing value. Artisan cutlery has always strived to improve quality, but not massively increase their prices. In fact, their prices have really been pretty similar. I mean, I don't know that they've really massively jumped up. They're one of the few companies that has kept this, you know, we do premium knives, but we try to keep it under 200, right? And their budget knives have also come in just absolutely legendary in terms of pricing. They've had hiccups here and there. They've had some lock face geometry issues. They definitely had some lock stick issues. They have, have had some uh, quality control issues in the past. But this is one of the best examples of an artisan color knife that I have ever seen. And the fact that it, you know, we're looking at a nice ergonomic Mike Snowdy design, uh, uh, S90V titanium, fantastic overall quality coming in at $199. This is a really excellent knife. The only downside for some people is going to be that it's a big knife. It's the same issue with the, you know, the other version. It's big. If you don't like big knives, or, you know, they, they just, you know, take too much space in your pocket or weigh your pants down, then it's not going to be for you. If you're okay with bigger knives, this thing's not massive, right? 
it's not as it's not as big as the my cold steel four max. You know, cool cool story. I'd say they say that as if like you have to join a club to buy it. You don't. Like any any Joe Schmo with like what are the what are the freaking light versions cost like eighty bucks? Any Joe Schmo can just like go to Blade HQ and buy one for eighty bucks, right? You're not in. You don't need to like pass a test or be like Ninja Tactical Master level one hundred to be able to buy. So there's no. I don't understand. Like there's just so much pride of ownership of those things. They are fantastic knives, but it's just so weird how you guys think I keep making the same joke over and over again. It's so weird how often that gets said, right? <laughs> Somebody, there's no matter where you are on the internet, if it's if it has something to do with knives, there is a sweaty dude hunched over his armchair, his couch, right, just like looking for any excuse to let everybody know that he EDCs a cold steel Formax or a cold steel of some sort, right? <laughs> there's it's just absolutely present, right? Just like there's always somebody who's itching to complain about Benchmade pricing, right? Those guys are there, and they do nothing but that over and over and over again. Anyways, if you like large knives, right, you're going to like this. It's not as big as some of the cold steel monstrosities, but it's still a big knife. If you don't like big knives, it might not be for you, but this is a super duper recommendable knife. It's going to go in my most recommended knives playlist. Absolutely. I will make sure that this is linked right down in the description so you guys can pick it up if you want to. Thanks again to Artisan Cutlery for providing this knife for review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.